we talked about the intersectional approach, yeah? What if someone who feels gay also believes that that homosexuality is a sin? What if they have two things that they're doing at one time? They feel homosexual, they feel like they have homosexual inclination, but they also have the belief that what if they, if they act upon that imp impetus, that what they will do is they'll do something sinful. So on an intersectional analysis, now we have to go back and ask, what do we prioritize in analysis? What they believe or what they feel? And if that person makes a conscientious decision to say, you know what, I feel like this, but my identity as a human being is, should be prioritized in this way, for example, in a religious way, and therefore I'm going to suppress my sexual, you know, homosexuality, for example, I'm going to suppress it, then that is as legitimate on an intersectional analysis and a liberal analysis as someone, quote unquote, coming out of the closet. Basically, there is a presupposition that sexual expressionism should be prioritized over and above rep, um, suppression. But that, that, that doesn't make any sense. Why is that the case? Can that be proven? So in other words, there's this idea which actually takes, all the way, takes us all the way back to Freud, one guy called Freud, yeah? Sigmund Freud. He wrote a book called Civilization and His Discontent. And in it, he basically argued, and he had this thing called the Oedipus Complex. I don't want to go into major detail, but he said that, you know, when, when, a, when a child is born, they have psychosexual stages of development, and at one stage, like for example, a young boy feels attraction for his mother, like he wants to engage sexually with his mother, right? And then we start, you know, controlling those desires and so on. And he argues in his book that basically we should be able to express ourselves as much as possible. And this is incorporated into this liberal ethic. This liberal ethic of just do it, kind of like, you know, the Nike slogan, yeah? Just do it, you know, YOLO, live once and so on. So sexual expressionism is prioritized over and above sexual uh, repressionism, if you like. So coming out of the closet is seen as the epitome of a self-expression. Yes? Even though, as I made the point in my debate yesterday for those who were there, coming out of the incest closet was not seen in the same way. Yani, someone who has sexual inclination for their brother or sister. Sorry to be very explicit here, but this is a very important topic. Because the, the truth is this, on social liberalism, the, the qaida or the, the principle is you can do whatever you want so long as you don't harm anyone else. That's what they say, yeah? Do whatever you want so long as you don't harm anyone else. Okay, so therefore the homosexual has the right to have sex with another man. But a brother doesn't have uh, the right to have uh, sexual intercourse with his sister. Sorry to be Yanni. Well, because deformed babies will come about. Okay, put a contraception. The same logic applies. Why is there LGBT rights in this country and not incest rights? when both of them are predicated on the same social construct, idea of a harm principle. So th the idea is that a sexual expressionism should be prioritized yani, over and above a repressionism, but even in certain contexts, there will be exceptions that are made, like incest, for example, some taboo things that they have. Society still haven't has a civil rights movement yet for. If there was, if there was a, a, you know, 100,000 people that had sexual feelings for their sisters and their brothers, and they come out hand in hand in the streets and they say, look, give us our rights, maybe things will change. But why should it be the case that that should be what has to happen in order for society to accept them, right? You know, they have the same, they should have the same rights to sexual expression. Anyway, that's a different question. The point is, as Muslims, we say all of these things are, go back to our expression as Muslims. We say, as Muslims, our morality is defined by what? Quran and Sunnah and through the mother heaven, and so on, yeah? So if we believe that having sex with a man, if you're a man, is a sexual aberration, is irreligious, is wrong, and you say, no, that's an illegitimate belief, then you're stopping us from believing what we want to believe. Where's the freedom of expression in that? We're not gonna, we are not going to sacrifice our expression to, to satisfy your own expression. Don't ever allow that to happen to your community. You have to fight tooth and nail before that ever happens in this community. Don't let them win the argument. Wallahi, even on their principles, there's no way you can lose this argument. You should be allowed to believe that having sex, two men having sex with each other is a moral aberration, is irreligious, is not correct. It's never going to be correct in my eyes. That doesn't mean now that I'm going to be disrespectful to homosexuals. No, we're going to have a good relationship with homosexuals because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, Allah 
we haven't sent you except for a as for all of the people, for all of the people, not just for, you know, one sexuality. No discrimination. Well, like, the prophet came for everyone. The homosexual, the heterosexual, the bisexual, the black man, the white man, the green man, the yellow man. Everyone. He wasn't sent for specific people. Which goes back to the racist point, uh, racism point that you meant. In Allah Fadl, Allah Arabi, there's no Fadl, there's no Li Arabian for, for Arabi. You know, over uh, Ajami, or uh, Ajami over Arabi. Or for a black man over a white man, or a white man over... So it's an inclusive message of Islam. But that should not mean that we're going to change our morality because now you're, you're impinging on our freedom of expression and you're impinging on our freedom of thought. You're telling us what to believe. You're telling us what to believe. It's the equivalent, it's the moral equivalent of someone who's a vegetarian who believes that eating meat is wrong. Yeah? It's told, no, you can't have that belief because we have this, you know, all these people are eating meat. Therefore, you know, all this, you're calling them immoral. Even if they, they believe that that is an immoral action and eating meat is wrong, shouldn't they be allowed to believe, right, that eating meat is an immoral action? Is vegetarianism going to be outlawed? Are you going to call it vegiphobia? You're a vegiphobe. No. No, don't, don't go there. The LGBT community, they have to know full well, and you have to make this case very clearly, that we will definitely treat you with respect and definitely allow you to enter our spaces. They're more welcome in our spaces than we are welcome in our spaces because we want them to come into the mosque. We want, the LG, we want homosexuals to come to the mosque from, uh, from, from, from Muslim faith and non-Muslim faith. And yeah, it's not an impossibility to be a Muslim homosexual. You can have those feelings. And you can even commit the action. We're not even going to excommunicate you from Islam. Even if you have sex with a thousand men, we're not going to excommunicate you from Islam. Sorry to say, I'm, I'm bit, but however, we are going to say that action is wrong. And if you are, and if we are stopped from doing this because of this, what is referred to as a homo nationalist agenda, yes, where homosexuals juxtapose themselves away from the Muslims in order to find some home uh, nation state in the Western world and so on, forget about it. We're not going to accept that. Muslim communities have to be strong. Just like Jewish communities were, just like Orthodox Jewish communities were. Just like Christian communities in the Bible Belt can say ridiculous things. You're going to hell, you know. Shut up. <laughs> Be quiet, redneck. Donald Trump and these guys. Be quiet. And they're allowed to do that. And I got a gun here. And they're walking around with guns and threatening behavior. And they're okay. But us Muslims, we have to be victimized, otherwise abjected for, for homosexuals to... Uh, to uh, no. Well, we believe firmly, wholeheartedly, definitely, blatantly, obviously, willingly, that homosexuality, if done in practice, is sinful. And we will never back down from that. Don't ever let you, don't ever let them back down from that position. The moment you back down from that position, Allah, you've backed down from Islam. Jazakum Allah khair.